What's up everyone? Welcome to our seventh Flash game development tutorial. And in this tutorial we're going to be going over random battles. Now what we basically, if you remember where we left off in the traveling section, we made it to where, if we test our movie, we made it to where, once we go over to the overworld, our starting town is town one, and if we click on any town, the bar goes, well, acts like we're traveling. And if we click farther, it goes slower and slower, thus making, giving the illusion of the actual travel time being a long time. So what we want to do is, we want to start a way, or excuse me, <laughs> we want to make a way to where when the player's traveling, they have a chance every now and then of encountering a battle. Now the only way to do that is to basically declare a static variable, increase its value, and if the value equals a certain number, then, well, if it equals, <laughs> sorry, if it equals a certain value, it'll start up a fight. Now we're not going to get into the fight right now, but we are going to get into how to make the random battle occur. So if we open up our action script, we notice we have our travel function and our get distance function. And what our travel function does is it checks if traveling is true, and if it is true, and if the travel bar's x scale is less than 100, meaning if it's less than 100% of its normal size, the travel bars dot the actual bar the x scale of that plus equals 35 divided by the distance, meaning if the distance is larger, this number is divided by it, thus making it a smaller number, thus making it, well, harder to travel over long distances. And if it is greater, greater than, or if it's not less than 100, meaning it is greater than or equal to 100, it'll automatically set our traveling to false, meaning they reach it, and we trace to the console successfully traveled. So what we're going to do is actually up here, we're going to go ahead and create uh, an integer value. We're going to just call it um, battle counter. Actually, we'll just call it number, battle number. We'll just set that equal to zero. I'm going to save that, and now uh, below our get distance function, we're actually going to create a new function. We're going to call it function random battle and it's not going to take any parameters um, so what we're going to do next is with this, first of all let's go ahead and add it to our on enter frame that way I can better explain it random battle so what's going to happen now is on every frame it's going to run the travel function and it's going to run the battle function so what we want to do and since we're running 24 frames a second, that means every second that this flash is running while, well, just period, if every second that the flash runs, 24 frames will pass, which means these functions, both get distance, travel, and random battle, will be executed 24 times a second. So what that means is if we decide to put battle number plus equal one in there, that means in one second, battle number will equal 24. Okay. So what we need to actually do is, first of all, before doing that, we need to put input an if function. So put down if travel e equals true, then we do our code. Oh, traveling, excuse me. I knew something sounded weird. If traveling equals true, then it'll fire whatever's in here. That way, it's not constantly running random battle. <clears throat> well, it's constantly running it, but it's not constantly checking any actual code. So what we need to do is we need to put battle number plus equal one. So now, what will happen is every second battle number will equal 24. And what, what, we, what we're going to basically do now is we need to come up with a variable or a set number that we wanted to check for a random battle. So if every second this is 24, let's say we wanted to check for a random battle mm, every three seconds. So that would be 60, 78. So now what we need to do is input another if function, say if battle number is greater than or equal to 
78. What we need to do is now we actually do the random encounter chance. So we're going to create a random variable. We're going to say chance equals uh, random to, let's say, 99 plus 1. Now, the reason why we did random 99 plus 1 versus just random 100 is I'm, I'm making this out of 100, by the way, if you couldn't tell. Anyways, um, the reason I did random 99 plus 1 is because the random function will choose a number between 0 and the given number. Now, if we add 1, then that means our smallest number can be 1 because if it chooses 0 and then it adds 1, that makes it 1. And if it ends up being 99, it adds 1, it becomes 100. So this puts our chance meter out of a, about 100. Now, to make the actual chance chance, like the percentage chance, what we need to do is a good, a good the best way to put it would be to create um, depending on the percentage, in our case, if we wanted a 10% chance, what we would do is we would create five different variables, um, each saying they equal a random number, and then we create one if statement saying it if it e if this chance number right here equals, let's say we named it chance one, chance two, chance three, chance four, chance five, and so on and so forth, that would be the best way to do a random percentage, or to do an actual percentage. But in our case, we're just going to make it simple, nice and clean. What we're going to do is we're going to say if chance is less than or equal to 10, then trace battle encountered, and then say else trace no battle caught. And then on both statements, we're going to reset battle number equal to zero. Now what this will do is this will reset our counter, meaning it will check. We could just keep on adding this number for each second, but that would become really annoying since you, depending on how far you make your towns and everything, they may be waiting for more than 10 seconds, meaning you would have to make an if statement for 78 and then whatever 78 plus 78 is, then whatever 78 plus that is, you'd have to make separate if statements. To make things simple, we're just going to reset battle number to zero, thus resetting our counter to uh, three seconds. And another way to actually make it a little easier to find out how many seconds, we could just create a variable called seconds equals our, let's say we wanted it to be five seconds and we just do multi multiply that by our frames per second and there we go now all we have to do is just input seconds so let's actually just keep that three times 24 that equals how many seconds we want or the three is the how many seconds we want 24 is our frames so we should be good to test let's go ahead and test the movie continue go to the overworld and let's try town three. So there we go, it says no battle caught. And what we should actually do is beforehand trace what chance equals. That way we can see whether or not it actually <laughs> encountered the battle. So we click on town two. It said 33, so no battle was caught. 66, so no battle was caught. Another 66, that is a very odd. And 59, no battle caught. So if we could just continue and try this, we'll encounter more on this one. 79, no battle caught. 81. Let's see if we can get it to catch a battle. If not, we can probably just increase the percentage. Hmm. Oh, there we go. 
We got an eight, and it said battle encountered. So we know our random battle encounterer is working. So what we do in, I guess in the next tutorial, what we'll do is we'll go over the actual battle, uh, how to actually start our battle, make a frame for it and everything, how to start our battle. Um, now all we would do is if we actually encounter the battle, we would just reroute this frame. Uh, we would just tell the, we would just tell this function to redirect the frames, topmost frames, into our battle frame and there we'll do calculations on enemy types and all that good stuff. So this has been Bender, thank you for watching, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next tutorial.